So if you're new to the automotive industry or you're looking to become a mechanic in the automotive industry, I'm gonna be giving you guys five tips that I've learned over the past 11 years working in the trade. So let's get started. Yo, 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 what is up guys? Nick the Kai here, Let's Drift Media. Thank you for coming back to the channel or if it's your first time here, welcome on in. So if you're watching this video, we are back on the weekly upload schedule. My PC is all up and running, it is badass and we are ready to roll, so let's get back into it. So first tip I got is don't go into massive debt off the tool truck companies. If you're working in a dealership, independent shop, even at some of the automotive community college or I don't know if UTI, but the tool trucks will go there and they will try and suck in these new guys like there's no tomorrow. Like they try to take advantage of them because they know that they don't really know what the heck they're doing or what the heck they even need. So they really prey on a lot of these new guys and it's kind of messed up because they'll try and sell them a lot of stuff like they don't need. Like I remember I was on the Lubrac at Toyota and we had this newer guy and he pretty much got hustled into buying like a full set of like snap on hammers while we are on the loop rack and he came off that truck and I was just like, dude, why did you buy these snap-on hammers? Like, yes, they are nice, don't get me wrong, but when you're just changing oil, why do you need to go spend seven to $800 or however much they were for a set of hammers? Like, what the heck, go to Harbor Freight and go buy something cheap for now. Sorry to interrupt this video, but today's video is sponsored by Ewin Racing. I don't know if some of you guys know this, but I spend a lot of the time on the computer, whether it's watching YouTube videos, editing YouTube videos, replying to your guys' comments, or playing Call of Duty. So, Ewan Racing was nice enough to send me out one of their top of the line gaming chairs. Go ahead and show you guys it a little bit. Got a nice adjustable armrest. Go up, down, front, back. You can even twist it how you want. Got super smooth casters on it. That's really nice, got this cool little uh, almost like hubless design or whatever you want to call it, but this thing is really smooth on carpet or a hard surface and it reclines pretty damn far. Okay, you want to take a nap or something, a little, little nappy time in, you get it in. I've tried out several other gaming chairs before, you can see this one right here. They work for a little bit, but... This one from the start just made a lot of noise and it really drove me crazy. So we are on their website right now. Just wanted to show you guys some of the options that they have. You can see this is the one that I got sent to me. I really preferred the cloth type over the leather one. You get a little sticky with that leather, but they got tons of color options. They even have the XL sizes for you bigger gentlemen or ladies. But you can see they have a lot of options when it comes to chairs to fit everyone's choice, style, whatever you're looking for. Shout out to Even Racing. Feel free to check them out in the link in the description down below as well as if you are interested in purchasing one, there's a coupon code in there for you guys. But let's get back to today's awesome video. But really just when you're starting off, usually you don't really know exactly what you need to buy. When I was first starting off, I had the 50% discount for Snap-on. So I did buy some stuff. I probably spent like maybe like a thousand or two thousand dollars, but I just bought pretty much the basic stuff. Like I bought a set of screwdrivers. I bought a three eighths ratchet. Uh, I bought a set of three eighths sockets, short and deep, size eight millimeter through nineteen millimeter. And I feel like that was all I bought from Snap-on really, because it was so expensive and I was like, at the time, I didn't have anyone telling me what I should get or shouldn't get, so I just bought that basic stuff. And I still have those today, to this day. So I feel like I at least got lucky. I didn't go buy like these huge starter kits that they try and sell you, but that just goes to the point that if you don't really know exactly what you need, maybe ask somebody at your shop or watch some of my videos where I give you guys the tools that I recommend. Um, but it just doesn't make sense for me for people to go into debt on these trucks, especially for some of these tools you're not really gonna use. Like myself, I've even bought stuff like, I have a snap-on uh, compression tester and leak down tester, 
and I probably used it like one time and then I haven't used it since. But I mean, it's not the same case for everybody, but that's why I say kind of get in the field, maybe buy some basic cheap stuff. And once you figure out what tools you really like or what you would like, like a nice version of, then go and buy that nice version of it. But don't go on the Snap-on truck, on the Matco truck, on the Cornwell truck, and just pull up like a $1,000, $2,000 tab and be like, screw it, you know what? I could just pay $20 a week because it's gonna take you a long time to pay that $20 a week, $25 a week, which ends up coming out to like at least $100 a month and it'll just be unnecessary debt. So don't do it guys, trust me. Figure out what you need and then if you want to spend the splurge on the extra money, then go ahead. Next tip I got is don't be afraid to ask for help. I know if you're new or even if you're not new, some people just don't like asking for help and just do it. If you don't know what you're doing, it doesn't hurt to maybe ask somebody for some pointers or advice uh, on doing the job you're doing, or say you're in a situation that you haven't been in before, maybe dealing with a customer, it doesn't hurt to maybe stop and be like, let me go talk to somebody before you give the customer the wrong answer. Or if you're working on a car and you don't know what you're doing and you just decide to say, screw it, I'm gonna go for it, uh, you're probably gonna break stuff, especially if you're new. Um, so just Everyone does it, there's no problem at all asking for help, saying, hey, I've never done this before, like maybe you can kind of guide me in the right direction so I don't mess something up. Cause I feel like a lot of the times people are afraid to ask for help and then they end up breaking something and it's like, dude, like you could have just asked this person, they would have said, hey, remove this first or put this in this position before you try to pull out the part, something like that. And it just all could have been avoided with a simple stop and uh, kind of, Stop and ask for help, pretty much. Don't be afraid. Next tip I got is don't be afraid of taking on big jobs that you're not comfortable doing, especially working in the dealership or working for a shop. Don't be like scared because you haven't done a job before and it's gonna make you kind of uncomfortable because you don't know what you're doing. Um, I've had people ask me before, like how do you get comfortable doing heavy line or doing all these major repairs? They look like pretty intimidating jobs for someone new like me. And what I pretty much always tell them is the only way you're gonna learn or get your confidence in doing big jobs or scary jobs is by doing big jobs or scary jobs. Like anything in life, you can read all the books you want on it, you can watch all the YouTube videos you want on it, but until you actually get your hands dirty and get in there and start doing stuff like that, that's the only way you're gonna build that confidence. Um, I can remember starting off in Toyota, my first, probably one of the big jobs I had was an FRS, the valve spring recall. It was the first one to ever come into the dealership, so nobody's done it. I don't think it was my first big job, but I was pretty intimidated because I was like, man, this is like basically a Subaru. I've only worked on Toyotas. Like I gotta pull this engine out. I gotta tear apart the upper end or the side end technically on those boxer motors. And I was pretty scared, but like I just followed the repair manuals. I took my time, I took pictures work slow and cautiously. And then after the first one, I was like, wow, that really wasn't that bad. And then I got did another one. And I was like, yeah, that wasn't that bad. And then I just kept getting better and better at them. And then now I look at them, I'm like, man, I could do that job like in my sleep. Like I could do that job with my eyes closed practically. Not really, but I mean, you get the point. Like after you do stuff, you just get more familiar with it. And these big jobs don't feel that big anymore. And I feel like that's really helped me out now going into the heavy equipment world because a lot of these jobs working on these semi tractors, I've never worked on these. So at first it is still for me like a little bit scary. It's like, oh man, I've never done this before. But that's really the only scary part is because you've never done it before. And then the more I get into these and start doing these different jobs, I realize that, like I said, it's not that bad. So don't be afraid guys, you gotta step out of your comfort zone in order to better yourself as a mechanic. And next tip I got is think in the long run when you're thinking about possibly leaving the shop you're at. I know now it seems like a lot of people expect to just get hired into a dealership, start out as a loop tech or whatever trainee for like maybe a month or two and then they wanna be on the line, they wanna be flat rate or they go fleet and they start off 
what I did, changing oil, and then they want to go up, they want to go up. But uh, you really have to just look at the long run and understand that sometimes things take time. I've seen a lot of guys when I was at Toyota, it's like they would start there, change oil for like two or three months, and then they don't see, feel like they're gonna move up anytime soon. So they're like, all right, screw this, I'm out. Like they might go to another dealership or they might even leave the being a mechanic because they got such a bad taste just starting out. And they don't really look through like the bigger picture and you just gotta be patient because don't expect to just jump into a brand new shop and just climb the ranks just like that, like within a couple months. Like people are probably in front of you waiting to move up and you have to understand that sometimes you gotta put in the work and you gotta put in the time in order to move up. Because you could say maybe be on the lube rack right here, you're getting paid whatever right now it is, $15 an hour and say, there's another shop and they're like, oh, we'll pay you $17 an hour to change oil. Okay, you're gonna get a $2 pay raise, but say what happens if you stayed at that original shop and then in six months they decided to move you up to a flat rate tech or a trainee, then automatically you're getting double minimum wage. So in California is making $31 an hour and it's like, say maybe you went to that other shop that was paying you $17 an hour to change oil, but they don't really wanna move you up. So now you're stuck there still changing oil for $2 more an hour when you could have just put in a little bit more time here and made a whole lot more money once you moved up. So I actually did make that same mistake when I was at Toyota, I was a loop tech and I felt like I was stuck and they weren't gonna move me up. So then I went to Chevy for a couple dollars more an hour and it was cool and it worked out for me because I ended up moving up faster at Chevy to be able to go back to Toyota as a flat rate tech but you really have to weigh out all your options and just don't look at the small term short picture like I'm gonna get a dollar or two more right now. Think about like maybe in a year where you could be if you stay where you're at now. But also think about if it's not nothing's gonna happen in a year or two where you're staying, then yeah, get the hell out of there and go look for something else. But just really evaluate the whole situation and try and look at everything. The next tip I have is, this one could apply for new or older mechanics, is stay humble. Um, there is a lot of people with their head up their ass in this industry where it's like, they think they have just seen it all and they are just the best in the business and they are never wrong and they never make mistakes. And people like that, I just, I really don't like people like that. But just stay humble because there's always something new to learn. You're always gonna be finding out new things, learning new things. I feel like I'm always learning. I feel like you're never gonna know it all. You're never gonna see it all with technology always changing. There's always new types of vehicles or new types of equipment. Something you haven't seen before. Yeah, just stay humble because you never know. There's gonna be a time where maybe, um, you run into a problem that you have no idea what to do. It's something new to you because like I said, there's always something new. And there could be a guy, maybe he knows what he's doing. He has the answer, but you have this big cocky attitude where it's you know everything. It's like, okay, the guy who's over here is gonna be like, okay, well, you know everything, figure it out. And then you're stuck to just figure it out. I mean, yeah, you might figure it out, but had you not been such a big headed dude, maybe that guy would have just been like, oh, like here, I'll help you real quick. And it could have just helped make things a lot go a lot smoother. So that's all I got for you guys. If you made it this part of the video, don't forget to join our Discord. It's still up and running and quite a lot of people are pretty active in there. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'll try to continue now on the weekly schedule since we got the PC up and running. Maybe I'll do a video on that or I heard you guys wanna see the Dobermans. So maybe we'll show you them, but that's all I got. Hope you guys enjoy it. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.